So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. iPhone 14 Pro Max versus iPhone 15 Pro Max after two months. It's actually closer to three months later because we're going to be about three months on the 15 Pro Max in about a week here or so. But I wanted to talk about my thoughts about these after having this phone right here, the 15 Pro Max, since launch day, how I now feel about 14 Pro Max. Some people are always looking at last year's phone, maybe even 13 Pro Max right now. So let me know if you want to see another video about that before we wrap up the year. But let me just talk about was the 15 Pro Max worth another, you know, $1299 once again. And I'd say yes for a couple of reasons, but probably not if you're you're still paying on your iPhone. If you, if you like type of person likes to upgrade every year, there are some niceties here. But definitely not if, if like you don't buy phones that often. But some of the things I like about it that really uh, I've enjoyed is the reduced bezels, the cleaner aesthetic. Um, the iPhone, especially with the Space Black, I did love the Space Black. But the Space Black really does get a lot of smudges on the rails here of the stainless steel. While those still feel more premium to me. Um, and also this logo right here could get a little smudgy as well. Not too bad. And up in and around the cameras here, that would also get very smudgy. So I was cleaning my Space Black one quite a bit, although it wasn't a case majority of the time. Um, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has definitely felt just a lot more clean of a phone. So that's just a really nice jump. I mean, in here you can still get this smudgy, but off to the edges, you'll see the titanium shell just really does give it a really good uh, clean aesthetic that stays clean pretty much all the time and I often get scratches around this area where the like port is to charge on a lot of my iPhones but so far so good with the iPhone 15 Pro Max right there which is I'm um, saying quite a bit um, so yeah I've, that's I really enjoyed that and I've also enjoyed the increased zoom on the camera after about you know a few months here so definitely I am I really enjoyed um, that for, for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, in terms of the body and the build, the 14 Pro Max is still a very premium feeling phone, although it has a lot more heft to it now. And I'm not saying it's heavy, like a person can't handle the phone. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that the comfort of holding this phone by comparison to the now iPhone 15 Pro Max is kind of like not very comfortable. This one just feels smoother in the back when you hold it. Um, the edges feel smoother. It feels lighter. It kind of just feels like you can much more easily manage this larger iPhone right here. So definitely really like the weight reduction. It's not massive, like it's only like 20 grams, but it makes a big difference. It really does. It's really felt in the day to day, but I wish it was even lighter like the 15 plus. It's still um, pretty manageable. So from that area of the body, I definitely uh, really enjoy the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The 14 Pro Max, though, I still think it looks more, it looks a little bit more beautiful with its, you know, stainless steel edges. It just feels just like a little bit more higher end to me. But the 15 Pro Max feels very nice on the front, especially with reduced bezels. Just the body overall just is more comfortable. So I would say this one's more form. This one's more function, aka it just feels better in hand. This one probably could probably win in terms of the beauty contest being a little bit more premium with them stainless steel rails really being quite uh, heavy and just giving you that nice luxe feeling. The 15 Pro Max titanium is really strong metal, but we've seen in tests that it doesn't hold up quite as well as the 14 Pro Max. Now, when it comes to the durability, I haven't felt as confident with the iPhone 15 Pro Max as I did with the 14 Pro Max. The 14 Pro Max actually feels so sturdy that I don't even feel like I need a case all the time, although I still put a case because I don't want damage to my phone. Um, the 15 Pro Max just feels like I have to have a case on it. Like, it just feels a little bit more fragile. I don't know how to describe it. Um, I don't feel as, as safe rocking this one around. It just that lighter weight. Um, seeing some of the drop tests where the backs were cracking very easily. I'm just um, a little bit more concerned about the 15 Pro Max. Now, I'm not going to be able to bend it and crack it or nothing like that. I don't feel like it's that weak. It's nothing like that. It's not even a weak phone to begin with. It's pretty sturdy, but it just doesn't have the level of sturdy uh, strength I feel like the 14 Pro Max had. So for that reason, I've been rocking a minimal case for quite some time. And so from the durability aspect, I do have to say the 14 Pro Max is still a winner. 
So when it comes to the display, which one wins? And I think it's clearly the right. And um, why? The bezels. That's about it. They basically have the same ProMotion smooth display. They basically both have similar brightness. I will say one thing, though, that improved on the 15 Pro Max. This never really dims, even when I have a brighter screen. It stays bright longer. This one would dim a lot on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, so it's like kind of like defeated the purpose of having great brightness. But the 15 Pro Max definitely has a little bit better display because of the thinner bezels. That is really the name of it. That's about all I could come up with in terms of being better. They're both the same size. Um, they don't really have a difference in size or anything like that. And they both kind of have the same color reproduction. So there's no real big issues there when you are looking at things. They all kind of look basically the same. So if you are looking for a display that has you know, a little bit more vibrancy, you're not gonna get it by going to the 15 Pro Max versus buying a 14 Pro Max. You'll just be getting those more reduced bezels. So if you want a more closer, slightly closer to all screen experience, you'll probably like the 15 Pro Max. But if you're finding the 14 Pro Max on a great deal, you're getting essentially the same product in display, so it's a really good pickup. When it comes to software, we have the 17.2 update that I just launched a video on yesterday on both phones, and they both run basically the same experience. This one has eight gigs of RAM, though, so keep that in mind, but you have the new digital clock widget. We have this new forecast widget. We'll show you a few days, but app library is the same. Um, just scrolling through the general user interface. It's iOS on both, so there's no major differences to speak of besides what you'll find in the camera section. So in the iPhone, if you go, or an iPhone 15 Pro Max, you have a couple of things that are different in software. They're mostly hardware related though, like the action button. You'll be able to click the action button right here and use translate now. You have no action button on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but by the way, has that been a big change for me? Not really, haven't really cared that much. You now have the journal app in both of them, but the main software differences come in the area of camera. If we go to formats, you can now crop in on this. You can change, um, you can use spatial video for Vision Pro here on the 15 Pro Max. And you have, let me go over here. Where is it? It's like a, a setting where you could change between different camera layouts right here. Main camera. So you can see you can go 24, 28, and 35 millimeter on the main camera. So there's a couple of things in the camera software that change up, but other than that, these phones are identical in software, and that is to say they both perform the same as well. So really, unless you need that extra camera software the in hardware, then this is really exact same experience. And now we've already done a speed test on these two, which proved that there's no real major changes in speed and performance. However, I will say that the iPhone 14 Pro Max definitely was better at managing its heat um, and, and just heavier usage. The 14 Pro Max is a little bit better, but after a few updates, the 15 Pro Max doesn't really have that issue anymore. So if you are looking for um, really great performance, you'll get it on either phone. Um, you get a little bit more RAM on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So if you're looking for um, better ability to hold applications in the background and a long haul experience, you'll probably want the 15 Pro Max, but that's not gonna be really felt for several years to come. So overall performance, regardless of the fact that the A17 Pro chip feels about the same in day-to-day -day use. I do think the Vision Pro is going to be better supported, maybe not only supported on the iPhone 15 Pro Max as we're only seeing the spatial video option for 15 Pro Max. But as those newer you know products come out, 15 Pro Max will have the edge over 14 Pro Max. But other than those like really intensive things that not everybody's going to use, your everyday iOS experience is not really enhanced by getting an iPhone 15 Pro Max in the area of performance. So after two months, the camera upgrade has only been worth it for the zoom for me. The whole cropping on the camera thing, which I discussed earlier, has not been the biggest deal in the world. 15 or 14 Pro Max still has an amazing camera setup. It's basically similar to the iPhone 15 Plus now, um, but it still has more zoom than that phone go up to 15 times, which was an increase over some prior models. But you can see really good cinematic video, action video was new for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Really solid front facing camera, no issues there. Um, really good portrait modes. But it was just kind of um, just a 48 megapixel jump. It was still a great camera, don't get me wrong. 
it's still an amazing pro level camera. I just feel like we're getting to the point now where if you buy an iPhone 15 Pro Max, you, you better be buying it because you want that extra zoom or you're actually going to use these cameras. So um, if you're actually going to use the pro features in here, that's where it really gets your money's worth. But if you're not a heavy photographer or you don't take a lot of photos or videos or it's just not something that's serious in your life, this is not really worth the extra money. You might be better off going with last year's 14 Pro Max, you maybe have a 13 Pro Max or even a 15 Plus if you're not a heavy camera user. One area I do have to give 15 Pro Max the props is the battery area has been definitely better than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's lasting me close to that of an iPhone 13 Pro Max, whereas the 14 Pro Max had some battery issues for a lot of people. For me, it was never the most impressive. I had to charge this thing sometimes before the next day, but majority of the time, it was pretty good. It was still better than a lot of Android phones on the 14 Pro Max, but it did not beat out my iPhone 15 Pro Max. This has been one of the more impressive phones of the year in battery life, the 15 Pro Max versus the 14 Pro Max, pretty solid as well, but just not catching the iPhone 15 Pro Max. There's actually a physically larger battery in the 15 Pro Max, and it really shows day to day. As a matter of fact, if you're looking for the best battery life, this and the 15 Plus, even the 14 Plus of last year are all really solid options in that department. And if you're looking for use, the 13 Pro Max, one of the kings of battery. I have to say that the audio performance actually, it didn't blow me away, but I actually heard an upgrade on the 15 Pro Max. It sounds a little crisper and a little bit louder than 14 Pro Max, but this is not so big that it's like the main thing I would tell you to go pick up a 15 Pro Max over a 14 Pro Max. Just saying, if you did if you did skip out the 14 Pro Max, you are going to get better speaker and audio performance here on the 15 Pro Max by a little bit, especially at the very high volumes. It sounds crisper and a little bit louder. So when it comes to the phone call quality, it really hasn't been an issue for either. You can see SOS. I don't have my eSIMs on these at the moment. Um, I'm currently testing the 15 Plus again, but the... The phone call quality has been solid on both of these. I haven't had really signal strength issues. Um, the 15 Pro Max seems to hold on to better strength in multiple areas by a little bit, especially I noticed when in basements, um, when when underground, things where it's hard to get signal. Um, 14 Pro Max had like one or two bar less, but the 14 Pro Max was a substantial jump over some of the older 11 models and 12 models. So this was pretty good, but this is even better by a little bit. This area should be getting better every year and it just gets a little bit better this year on the 15 Pro Max, but nothing the average person in a major city is probably gonna notice. Both do give you Face ID, which operates exactly the same. Both give you Dynamic Island. Both of them have essentially the same overall feel, just the 15 Pro Max feels more polished. At the end of the day, this has not been a revolutionary change for me but a better change than the 12 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max to the 14 Pro Max. I feel like those past three phones were exactly the same. The titanium body on here with the action button over here and just the overall feel with the lighter weight, just the different edges. It kind of feels like a different phone, even though it has the same overall look. I still am looking for an even bigger change, maybe a bigger display, some split screen action in the software, which is annoying on both that they both can't do that. And maybe even a different way to get the face ID, maybe under display for a full screen experience. But maybe I'm asking too much there. Um, at the end of the day, the 15 Pro Max, has it been worth it? I think if you're a tech fan, yes. But for the average consumer or somebody who's looking to save some money, the 14 Pro Max is still one really great option. And all the videos I made before praising it throughout the year for being a beast are still holding true right now. I will continue to hold that way down the line. It's just the 15 Pro Max, as would expect, has done better. But it hasn't done so much better that it's like a revolutionary jump. It's just been a really nice premium, a few little enhancements here that take it to the next level. But... I think the 16 Ultra or 16 Pro Max are going to take it even further. Let me know your thoughts and let me know if you want to see another older iPhone compared to a newer iPhone and which one that is before we wrap up the year. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.